What up, data nerds? Let's talk about how I use machine learning as a data analyst. And this skill has been getting a lot of hype lately. So one of the fascinating things of machine learning. Machine learning. Machine learning. 18% say they're most excited about machine learning. Machine learning. Machine learning. Because of this, it's becoming more and more of a demanded skill in data science jobs. With so many other more important tools to learn for data analysis, should you even take the time to learn this skill? I mean, it's not even one of the first few steps of a data pipeline process. So we're gonna dive into all of this by going through a typical machine learning use case that I would do at predicting the salary of a data analyst. Real quick, thank you Coursera for sponsoring this video. And more specifically, the machine learning specialization course that I took in order to refresh my knowledge on this topic. But more on that later. All right, so what exactly is machine learning and how do I use it in my job? Well, in previous roles, after I'm done performing analysis to see what happened and then why this happened, I then find myself using machine learning techniques to go a step further with predicting data to see what will happen and what action to take. For this portion, I'll use known past values in order to build a model and predict future outcomes. How is this even applied in a data analyst shop? Well, in one of my first projects when I was working in supply chain, I was in charge of monitoring my team's performance on delivering our products to our customer. I had spent loads of time analyzing our past data to understand what was happening and also why this was happening. So I had a pretty sound understanding of the data. However, the major issue we uncovered was that we were really bad at telling our customer when a product would arrive. Imagine if your Amazon order was delivered a month or two after the promised delivery date. How upset would you be? No, God, please, no, no! Well, that's how upset our customers were. So how does someone like Amazon predict these delivery times so precisely? Well, it turns out, machine learning. And whether you realize it or not, these algorithms have become more and more a part of our daily lives. Not only are companies like Amazon using it for their estimated delivery times, but also for those recommended items to continue to get you to spend more on social media companies like YouTube are using these algorithms in order to provide the perfect content to you so you continue to stay on their platforms. But then there are the less sexy use cases that data nerds more often use to help with solving simple problems, like predicting sales for businesses, identifying fraud in financial institutions, or even in my case, Case, predicting something simple like delivery time. So this is what I found in this field of data analytics, is that you're probably not gonna build that next complex recommender algorithm. Instead, you'll be able to use machine learning in simple tasks. And that's what I chose to do in predicting delivery times. But it's not as simple as saying you're gonna implement machine learning. Instead, you have to take it a step further and select what type of model you wanna build with machine learning. First is supervised learning where you have data with a labeled data set. Let's say you had a data set with total pay of data analyst jobs, along with the associated number of years of experience for that job. For this, we could use regression, a form of supervised learning, in order to predict this total pay based on the number of years. Besides numerical prediction, we could also perform classification using categories. Let's say we want to identify the level of job, such as entry level or not, based on total pay to years of experience. From this data, we can predict classification based on the patterns we identify in the grouping. Next up is unsupervised learning. And unlike supervised learning where we have a label on the data set, in this, we're trying to predict something that is not in the data set. Let's say we know even more attributes about a data analyst, like experience, skill level, and tools they know. We could build an unsupervised algorithm to identify features that are more useful for categorization. We could also potentially find unknown patterns in the data, such as segments to identify how hardcore of a data nerd someone is, clustering them as real data nerds, hardcore data nerds, and maybe even a fake data nerd. The last major model to cover is reinforcement learning. The goal of this is to find a suitable action model based on rewards, like training a computer on how how to best win at Pac-Man by allowing it to play thousands of games and rewarding it for winning. Relating this back to our data analyst example, we could potentially build a model that could go through and categorize the best skills to have in order to land a job as a data analyst. But I would say this is overly complex and is not something I would typically do. Of these three type of models, I find myself primarily building supervised learning models. But I also do find myself working with data scientists and machine learning engineers that are building these unsupervised and reinforcement learning models. All right, enough of the theoretical talk. Let's actually get into coding a model using supervised learning. And for this, I'd love to share the model that I built for my job, but unfortunately that data is confidential. So we're going to be going through my same process, but instead we're going to be using data from data analyst salaries that I scraped from LinkedIn last year. Let's start with a simple data set first. And for this, we have the total pay 
along with the number of years of experience for a specific data analyst job. For this model build, I'm gonna use one of the most popular choices, and that is Python, and specifically the library Scikit-Learn. So let's go ahead and read this data in. And from there, visualize this total pay to years of experience for a data analyst using a scatter plot. It looks like there's a slight correlation with total pay increasing with years of experience. So let's investigate this. But before we jump into just building a machine learning model, we have to set up an environment in order to test this model. So for this, we're gonna be breaking the data up into a training and a test set. And as you guessed, we'll be using the test set in order to evaluate whether the training was effective. With this training set, let's now build this model. There's actually a plethora of supervised learning models that we could use, but I find myself gravitating towards linear regression the most. So using a linear regression model from Scikit-Learn, I can then from here go out and build this linear regression model. With this model, I then can plug in different years and see what the expected salary is. It's not over there. We still need to use that test data in order to see how good our model is. For Linear for linear regression, we can evaluate how good a model is based on its R squared score, which shows how well this test data fits to our model. So this score can be anywhere from zero, meaning the data doesn't really fit the model, to one, meaning the data matches exactly. Running some code to see what this R squared score is, we can see it's about 0.08, which is really close to zero and isn't that good. And actually, this is pretty common in machine learning in that the first model you build is probably gonna suck. It's up to you at this point to try different models and also maybe refine the data. I tested out a lot of these models already and none of it improved. But what about this one on neural networks? These types of models are designed to mimic our brains and they're built around a collection of neurons. In this, we could build a neural network in Python with popular tools like TensorFlow or PyTorch. And then similarly to how we learn, we could go through and train this neural network with data so that over time it predicts the values we want. Now, when we get into building these type of models, we're actually entering a subset of machine learning called deep learning. Now, this field is great as it's being implemented in a lot of solutions today but it's typically done by people like machine learning engineers and deep learning specialists, as they have specific training for this field as it's pretty deep. Also with training these neural networks, you typically need large sets of data in order to train it effectively. In our case, we only have about 2000 rows of job data, so I don't think that's really enough. All right, so getting back into improving that linear regression model, I think we need more data for this and not just more rows of data, specifically more attributes or columns to help explain what affects the pay of a data analyst. For example, we need things like the number of skills required for a data analyst job, the job level, whether it's entry level or higher, the industry so that we can see if things like retail or internet are higher paying, and maybe even the type of job, whether it's full-time or not. So we're gonna be using all of these features to predict pay using linear regression, or more specifically, multiple linear regression. Similar to last time, we'll break it into that training and test set and then build that linear regression model. Let's actually try out a case. Let's say that we're looking for an entry-level full-time job in the computer software industry with zero years of experience and only requires three years. For this, we can see the predicted salary is around $74,000. Let's now try the internet industry. And with this, we can see it's around 98,000. Testing this model with our test data, we can see that the R squared was improved to about 0.3, which is good, but it's still not as high as I would like it to be. From here, I would iterate further, try different models and improve the feature engineering. The next steps would be then taking this model and sharing it with my colleagues with a variety of tools. Before we get to all these different tools, let's look at how I would recommend going about learning machine learning. Well, for data analysts, I still recommend focusing on those top skills of SQL and Excel first, and then moving into those more advanced skills like viz tools and programming languages. It's only after this that I would recommend getting into machine learning, because you're typically not seeing this in entry-level data analyst jobs. When I was trying to learn this many years ago, there wasn't a single source that taught me what I needed to know for my job. Because of this, I had to binge watch YouTube and read multiple different articles and books. But I don't think this is a problem anymore. The machine learning specialization course from Coursera was recently overhauled to focus on Python. I actually went through this specialization as a refresher in prepping for this video. Andrew Ng is the main instructor and is basically a celebrity in the AI industry. Andrew provides a simple yet thorough approach to understanding machine learning. In the first two of the three courses, you focus on supervised learning, which I find myself gravitating to more. And then in that third course, course that focus on unsupervised and reinforcement learning. Now, besides data analysts that have the core skills already, I think this is also great for aspiring data scientists and machine learning engineers that know Python, don't need to be a master. Instead, it only focuses on the basics of Python and using common libraries. Now, the course does require some math skills, specifically algebra and arithmetic. But if you've attended secondary education, such as high school in the United States, you have what it takes to take this course. Andrew does get into higher level math, such as calculus and derivatives for gradient to 
100%, but as he explains, it's not necessary to get the basics of machine learning. The course is 49 US dollars and at most should take you three months. I think if you're devoting a few hours a day, you can finish it in less than a month. As always, Coursera believes that education should be accessible by everyone. Because of this, they're offering financial aid for the course, along with the option to audit the course and see the course material for free. Wrapping it up on the specialization, all the content is accessible through an internet browser, including the coding. So there's no need to install Python or any packages for this. So if you're interested, check out the link in my description to get a seven day free trial to start. All right, for the final section, let's talk about what tools we can actually use instead of just Python for machine learning. Now I have found from my job and working with others that Python is typically the number one choice in what to use for machine learning. But non-data nerds don't have this installed or even know how to use it on their computer. So you could still stay with this Python and share it with your colleagues, either via Streamlit dashboard or even putting it in something like Tableau or Power BI and sharing it in a dashboard in this fashion. But let's say you don't wanna use Python at all. You could potentially use visualization tools. A lot of these things such as Tableau and Power BI offer the capability of automated machine learning and also using models to predict data. The next option for building machine learning models is spreadsheets, specifically Excel. It's actually one of the first tools that I started with building machine learning models. A neural network? Can you even do that in Excel? Oh, you actually can? However, I wouldn't recommend building neural networks with Excel. Instead, I've used it for things like linear regression. But other models beyond this, Excel doesn't have the capabilities for, so I'd recommend shifting to something else. And lastly is SQL. SQL is a query language, so you can't really build machine learning models. But I found myself cleaning and then extracting data in order to then build machine learning models in things like Python. All right, so that was my crash course on machine learning. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. If you're curious about learning more about how much math you need to know as a data analyst, check out this video right here. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.